Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is week 66, and this week I got four topics. And the first one is the US Department that released a list of five approved drones for operating uh, within the US Department. We have uh, the FAA that's going to review counter UAS technology. I'll talk a little bit more about that. And also, uh, next thing is kind of fun. It's a, a patent that just came out from a drone that's going to be designed to pull uh, skiers, surfers, skaters, and, and whatever else wants to be pulled. Uh, and then lastly, this week is DJI Airworks, and, um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's get going. The first thing this week is the US Department that released a list of five approved manufacturers and five approved drones to be used in the US Department. Now, I talked about this, I've been talking about this for over a year now, where the US Department has forbidden the use of technology coming from certain countries, read China mostly, and, uh, and they finally released a list of approved vendors, and that list is Scadio, Parrot, Altavian, Teal, and Vint Vintage Robotics. And the idea behind this is that these companies are going to be uh, used and designing, even in the future, products for the U.S. government. And uh, the, the list of UAS is called the Blue UAS. That's the name of the list that they give it. Um, this obviously comes after years of, actually at least a year long battle uh, to ban all Chinese drones from uh, being used in the federal government, any federal government agencies. These companies will definitely have a big advantage now. Uh, some of them are actually starting to shift their focus primarily to this kind of project. Uh, Vintage Robotics, for example, is switching entirely to, the, uh, to this sector, to the, the public sector. And uh, Skydio, a couple months ago, has announced that they were getting $100 million in investment to ramp up production. Uh, they also had released the X2, which was their rugged version of their drone uh, to be used in, uh, in the government. So um, we've seen also Anafi that released their version of the Anafi USA, which is built in the US. Anafi uh, Parrot is a French company and they were, they're building this drone in the US. So um, the, the critics of this program are saying that not a whole lot of these five companies are actually able to produce at the moment. A lot of them are actually pretty small. Um, I think it's it's a good start to get the production with American drones, American-based drones. I'm not sure if I agree entirely with having a foreign company in there, but uh, with that being said, good for the other four that are uh, US-based. Now, it's going to be interesting to see, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be following this, especially with Skydio. Uh, Skydio had production issues related to COVID and uh, with their Skydio 2. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if they're able to continue producing on the, uh, the what I would call the commercial side of things with the, uh, the Skydio 2 and then whatever drone is coming up in the future, or if they're going to shift entirely into this market, which is, I'm sure, going to be very profitable for them. So uh, we, we know at this stage that, uh, we know DJI has a big part of the market. I think it's over 70% at this stage, and they have the ability to produce a lot of drones. So it will be interesting to see how quickly uh, these smaller companies can ramp up the, and see the quality of product that they bring in and then see if they actually will have something for the commercial world as well, which is personally what I'm interested in. But um, so this this is the beginning. I think we're, we're, this is not the first that we're going to hear about these companies. Uh, here are some pictures of the actual drone, so you can see them right here. And uh, so that's the uh, the Skydio is the X2, and then you have uh, the uh, the 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 other one, the the Versper right here, and then. You can see the uh, Anafi USA and then the other two models right here. So uh, all small drones, they're all very small, designed to be used on the field by, uh, by US forces, for example, for the, the X2 at least, and then the, uh, the Anafi. The next thing I want to talk about is the FAA is going to be testing counter US equipment. And this is kind of an interesting uh, topic, I think, because as part of the Reauthorization Act of 2018, the FA was tasked or required actually to make sure that these counter UAS equipment don't interfere with safe operation. And the FA has announced that they were going to be looking into these systems and see how uh, they can mitigate the potential risk that it pos poses to UAS operation and other operation around. Uh, I was in a discussion a couple of weeks ago in one of the UAS conference, the FAA symposium, 
And somebody from the FAA was telling the story of this, um, this cruise line company that was trying to jam the GPS signal f so that drones couldn't be used around the ships. And, uh, and the FAA was telling them to say, well, you know, when you, or they were actually asking the FAA if they could do it. And then the FAA was like, well, if you're going to be jamming GPS, you're not jamming GPS just for drones. You're jamming it for your own ships. You're, you're, you're uh, jamming it for an uh, airplane that may be in the area or for grandma that's driving to the airport or to the cruise ship. Now they don't have access to uh, the GPS information. So I think that's kind of part of the reason why the FAA is going to be looking into this more extensively to make sure that none of this jamming is affecting um, who is not supposed to be affected by it. The next thing is kind of a fun one. This is from Amazon. Amazon has released a, a new patent. Now the patent was put filed in, in 2016, but they released public information about it. It looks like a UAS powered towing system that's designed for skiers, surfers, skaters. I'm sure it could be used for a lot of other things. Uh, the patent includes information. Uh, they said that there is collision avoidance available, point-to-point uh, -point navigation, so you can tell it where you want to go, and then the ability to lift the user as well. Now I can see actually this for um, for skiers as an emergency if you need to get out of a situation and uh, and then go back to safety, for example. I think that would be great. Um, even for surfers, I guess, if you were to uh, in a situation where you caught in a rip current and then you needed to get back to safety. Um, otherwise. <laughs> As much as I love drones, I, I would hate to start seeing drones just flying everywhere and, uh, and then creating just additional noise pollution or just uh, additional uh, things in our, in our video. Imagine going to the beach and then all of a sudden you have all these surfers that are just being towed by a bunch of drones around. Uh, don't know how I feel about this. But uh, the article, you can see, I'm going to put a link down there and you can see more information about that. The last thing I want to talk about, and I'm not going to talk a whole lot about this, DJI Airworks is going on this week. Uh, there is there's so much information at this conference. Uh, I, I mentioned it a while back. I think the, the fee was like $35 to get in uh, when you get the early bird. It's $99 now to get in. But even at $99, there's so much information. So it's it started on Tuesday and it's running until Friday. And uh, Tuesday, thir Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I think it runs, yeah, Friday. And then... There's topics presentations every single day and you can go back and watch them afterwards. Um, I went down the list and I'm not going to lie, I, you can star every single one that you're interested in. And I came up with a hundred different presentations that I was interested in watching. Now, obviously, as you can imagine, it takes time to do all this. I haven't had a chance to watch all the ones that I wanted to watch. Some of them are overlapping with other ones, so I'm kind of prioritizing. But uh, I'm planning to do a bit of a review of all of this. The the um, the user experience has been really good, quite frankly. Uh, it's it's very simple to go in and click and go watch a live presentation. I actually did a presentation myself. I talked about how we can move the industry forward uh, with some meaningful training. And, uh, and I wanted to have this topic because I wanted to discuss things that we can do other than just passing the part 107 exam. And for those of you that are in my class, you know that we do way more than passing the exam, which I don't believe in. I don't believe in just getting a grade, a passing grade on the exam. I believe in you having the knowledge that you need to be a safe operator once you pass the exam, once you get on the field, you need to know what you're doing. So um, I wanted to kind of give some tips on how we can do this in this industry and kind of move the industry forward. So um, eventually we will make this available. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where just yet, but for right now, if you're in the conference, you can look me up in the panel and you can see my presentation and watch it. So um, with that being said, a uh, quick update on Pilot Institute. We just reached 6,000 followers on this YouTube channel. I'm really excited, uh, growing really fast. And, and again, I, I know I say this pretty much every week, but I love the interactions with you guys. This is... Um, just intelligent conversations going on in the comments. And, uh, and I really like hearing your point of view. I may not always agree with your point of view and you may not always agree with mine, but I, I love the interaction and I love talking to you guys and all the questions that you're asking. So, uh, so keep it up. I think we have uh, something really good going on. We also have a new course coming out. Now, not a drone course. I know this is a drone channel, uh, but we have an instrument rating course that is coming out. We, we released it to our students at the moment. And then in a week or so, we will be releasing to the rest of the world. Um, if you wonder how long it takes to create a course, this course is about 20 hours of content. It's a, it's a really big core course with a lot of 
uh, information in it. And, uh, and we've been working on this for pretty much since January of this year. So it's taken uh, eight months to get everything together. And, um, and we could have probably gone a little bit faster, uh, but I, I didn't want to cut any corners and I wanted to really provide the, the quality that you guys are used to with Pilot Institute. So if any of you are drone pilots and also you're looking for your instrument rating, then this is a, a good next step to the private pilots. And, um, and there, will be, there will be more courses. After we're done with this one, we have a big drone course that's coming up. I, I can't really say much about it at the moment, but, uh, but look for it uh, in the, the, uh, the middle of fall that's coming up. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I will um, let you guys go. I will see you next week and have a great weekend and fly safe. Mm -hmm.